It's my turn to talk. Finally. I've been sitting quiet. Here's a fun I'm gonna just talk funny for a second. Last time, last time we had an episode and I was quiet. Hmm. They were all like making fun of me. <laughs> saying, Kurt, why are you so quiet this episode? Now they scripted me to be quiet. <laughs> Scripted me to be quiet. What are you talking about? No, it's not scripted. And now, and now, there's, now there's no, now there's no talk. No, no conversation. I just want to point that out. <laughs> but let's move on. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'll, I'll seriously so, um, so I was, I was reading a stat the other day where, like, 80s or 90s. There's an ex exact stat here, but sometimes in the 80s or 90s, um, like 50 percent, 57 percent of teenagers were, said that they were already having sex. Hmm. 15 to 19, rel relatively speaking, right? Hmm. Today, they asked that same question and 40% of teenagers are having sex. Um, given, even if stats are a little bit off, that's a significant difference. That's 20% difference or so, right? Hmm. Something like that. Um, in your, I mean, you're, I know you're not dealing with teenagers all the time. You're, you're more an adult, couple, adult couples, but you're a yeah. parent. Yeah. So what, like a couple of us are parents. Angela mm -hmm. is also a parent too. Yeah, I'm a teenager. I'm a teenager mm -hmm. too. Our kids go to the same school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. I just oh. rent kids. <laughs> 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 so, um, so I mean, just with your experience as a parent, what would you say like hmm. is leading to kids having less sex, and does that even make sense, or is there something in the stat maybe that's just like off that they're missing? Um, hmm. But here's the thing: I'll throw my opinion before I even ask you that question. Yeah. I actually, I actually think the stat is true, hmm. and why I think the stat is true is because I feel like although sex is like way more out there and if you want to go have sex with somebody you can and you won't be judged as harshly even back in my day mm -hmm. as you would as you know as, as people are right now yeah. um i think kids are more distant mm -hmm. when i say more distance i mean like they're not as connected as as, as they were before right mm -hmm. so before like you literally had to be physical with somebody right. right now you don't have to be physical to be connected to somebody mm -hmm. so even if you you could feel like my daughter feels close to her friends that she went to, um, when she went to summer camp in California, she yeah. feels close to them. She talks to them every single day, she says. Hmm. But on Instagram mm -hmm. and on Snapchat, they have Snapchat uh, trends, I think they yeah. call them, or streaks. Yeah. They call hmm. them streaks where they have to talk every single day hmm. on Snapchat, right? So that's that's just my theory on it. What, what would you say, or is there anything that you see that would be leading to kids having significantly less less sex today? Well, you're right. I don't. I, that's not the area that I'm in. So mm. I, my kids are younger, 11 mm. and younger, and then I work. I love working with people like late 30s and up. Mm -hmm. So I actually am curious mm. about that age. So that's a really interesting mm. stat. So I don't really have any exposure. I could conjecture and yeah, talk no, about this is some conversation. Don't yeah, because that's fascinating. Like if you think <clears throat> it's okay, my my thought went to alcohol. Really? Because if you think, not as a reason for less sex, mm. as what? but as when you legalize something, make it uh, right. Mm. Prohibition and versus... Yeah. Right, like, then yeah. it's not, not there's anymore. something about taboo that has people mm. want it. Yeah, I see what that's, you mean. Yeah, that's exactly what, what I said so as well. So maybe that's, yeah. I don't know, and, and then yeah, like this odd, this odd, oh my god, I'm so old. <laughs> Because I'm saying this odd way of connecting, so disconnected. I don't get connected that way. Mind you, okay, we were talking about erotic blueprints, right? We were talking about types of pleasure. I'm sensual, so I like the tactile, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it could be that too. But <clears throat> So if there's more of a sensation of connectedness virtually, mm -hmm. well, you can't have sex that way. You mm -hmm. can have sexting, you can have that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but you can have intercourse, which I don't know what that stat is based yeah. on. Yeah. Actually, the iPhone has, what was it called, Seth? The iPhone? Tell me. What's it called? <laughs> the iPhone sex, what do you call it? <laughs> sex through iPhone, what do you call that? Oh, iBoning? I I really never heard that term. I bony? Yeah. I mean, like, tell me. Sorry. You gotta like describe it. Our, a our, our producer off camera has to explain that one. What's I boning? It's like where you are FaceTiming, but yeah. you're having like, oh, sex. virtual. Like your virtual sex. Okay. okay. That's a, yeah. It's, it's called masturbation. <laughs> yeah, but like FaceTime. But with but, someone. No, yeah, like, with like, someone. Our, our generation would have had like phone sex. I was, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. called I booming. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just never heard that when she said. And so does that get counted in the survey? Good question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, but you know what though? That actually that's actually a good a good a good kind of point to move on because uh -huh. I mean in, in I, I told these guys this last time and they again laughed at me. 
But back in back in the uh, the high school days, it was like so taboo, like for my generation to talk about or like oral sex. Yeah. To talk about like giving head or yeah. skin, or girls or guys. It yeah, was yeah. Really taboo Felicio. to talk about that. Yeah. Finesse, um, a little bit. And Angelina has a thing against the word pussy. Okay. So I'm not gonna say that word. No, 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 no. no. In, 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 in a derogatory term. So when you're calling someone a pussy in a negative way. Oh, thank way. you. No, that's fair. So I have nothing wrong with saying pussy. I think Let's it's go on beautiful. that. <laughs> I think it's beautiful, right? Like pussy, pussy, pussy. But I just don't want anyone to say it as an insult. Yeah. That's what I have an issue with. I agree. But continue. I agree. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> but, um, but I was saying like that like repressed me. Like that repressed yeah. my, my sexuality because yeah. I was super sexual yeah. even in high school, but I just didn't want to be like, oh, I love all those things. I literally had to lie about it. Yeah. Like literally be like, oh, I don't do that. But, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until yes. so I got to college and, and then kind of found my people, right? Yes. Like, I mean, that was my kind of sexual. <laughs> 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 so my sex people. My sex people. I love it. Yeah. It's so true though. So like, yeah. how, I mean, that was my kind of experience with, with sexual repression. Like, how yeah. have you seen sexual repression in, in working with your clients? Oh. How do you see it like express itself? It like goes one of two ways. Either that you have no clue. Like you really have no. Like I have people who th their partner is they're married or they're in partnership, <clears throat> and they really don't know what they're doing. Because we didn't learn. Did you learn from like a parent? Like where did you learn? Right, the learning porn. of porn. Yeah, right? which is skewed, right? And stuff like that. Yeah, also skewed. My mother gave me a book called How the Body Works. And did what? you read it? Did you actually read it though? I, I did actually. Okay, that was something you probably know more. But I mean, it was like, it didn't More really re just... sexual reproduction, less yeah, about yeah. like ah, intimacy. Exactly. Well, and we don't even talk about pleasure. No. no. Oh. Zero. The only thing my mom ever did so, for me yeah. was, was got her boyfriend to give me a bag of condoms. <laughs> when so, I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah. And then that person, I came in quite home one day, in my oh. room was a bag of condoms, and then he said, my he said that he left it there for me. Yeah, I got a book handed, yeah. and if I had any questions to ask, no questions. Mm -hmm. Like, of course not. I'm yeah. not gonna ask. And it was James Dobson. Very good. Do you Christian people know? Yeah, yeah I know James, James Dobson. You must know James Dobson. Yeah, yeah. And his family, yeah. counselor. Anyway, so we. I don't know the question. <laughs> <laughs> what like we were talking about? Repression. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like that. <laughs> so for me personally what was my experience or what is my client like what do uh, i hear oh, okay oh, yeah. so okay so me growing up in church there's the repression where you hush you don't talk about it mm -hmm. but then like really like when we learned about it we learned about the practical like the safety maybe mm -hmm. aids was big back then i remember yep. grade eight that was like the big time for aids so we knew about the danger uh but we never learned about the pleasure and then if you ha yeah so i feel like it's such a big question it's a grand question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so, and why? Why does it even matter? Like, why does it matter that people grew up repressed? I'm curious. Why does that matter? Well, well it matters to me because it, like, I felt like I lost like a lot of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <I was> <laughs> selfishly, that's real. That's the answer. I it's felt like I lost a lot of opp opportunity. But also, uh, like, when I say like I found my people, I found them. Yes, but it took like years to get over the repression. It, it was still oh, years yeah. of being like. I don't know if this is cool. And then remember, I, I went to school hmm. at university in New York, but yeah. I came back home. I'm back in Toronto right now. So yes. like, how do I carry that behavior back into the city that actually is like opposed to that? You know what I'm trying to say? So it's not yeah. like I'm just like, boom, went to New York, found my people, I'm, I'm liberated. Mm -hmm. It was like my, my repression was still very, very- I would much. interject, is it the city's opposed to that? Or is it you your feeling culture, as you're uh, from being of a, you know, Caribbean descent culture, your community is supposed to Yeah, my, well, your yeah. city is, your community is your city. Because Toronto right? is pretty liberated. Yeah, but, my, but my community, no. my community, no. yeah. my community, yeah, of course. My I grew up in an apartment building with, with all, all West Indians. Yeah. So it was, we, um, you couldn't even talk about it, about, yeah. about giving head. Yeah. You couldn't even talk about it. You would you would literally be beat up, literally, not even yeah, like yeah. figure No, I believe yeah. you. You would be beat up, so you couldn't talk about it. So to go from that at 11, 12, 13, when mm -hmm. this one people in my building started having sex, 11, yeah. 12, 13, yeah. I was actually one of the last ones at 14. Yeah. Um, it, it's actually, that's in your head, you just don't do that. So to go all those years, I went to the university when I was 18, to go seven, eight years with this, that's into yeah. your head. Yeah. And then just like, all of a sudden be like, no, it's opposite. And mm -hmm. feel that opposite where that's all they talk about. And they're like, mm -hmm. they make jokes about it and they're free with it. And the girls laugh about it, the guys talk about it. Like, it was like, it was, it was a, like great, 
but it was also like shocking a little bit like and then mm. i was a little nervous because i was like this is like fake it's not really real mm -hmm. you know what i mean it was oh, just yeah. it was just like a lot so this, it affected me for a long time if you no i love that because i think that's how it goes for any of us because we're all repressed to some degree mm -hmm. for whatever it is i mean we we're talking about lgbt community plus mm -hmm. community there's that repression where it's hidden and then you get connected to people who you relate to and mm -hmm. you feel like, oh, I can be me here. I remember going off to camp. Now that's funny because... <laughs> Hold on, what kind of camp? No, religious this is... Camp? The, it was religious camp. Did you say man <laughs> camp? Man camp. camp. <laughs> the pie. So I was it was actually the reverse because I was very, very religious, very in. And so I had like, I was like so shut down that sex wasn't even around for a period of time. And so for me, my, my embarrassment was of being Christian in a non-Christian school. So it's like any shame, right? So you go into a place where you're found and you know your people. I love that you call that, that your people, right? And you find, and then you come back. How do you still own a part of you? And was that really a part of you? Because you're like, huh, that's a little scary for me. That's a little much. Maybe I'm not quite that much, mm. right? But then you kind of, and you're trying to find your equilibrium yeah. for whatever that is, sexually, etc. Right? Yeah. So you talk, you ask a question. You're like, what's the problem with being repressed, or what's the like? Or like, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why does it matter to you that you're um, repressed? And I, as soon as you said that, like, I felt like, ah, oh! huh? Because mm. I, I was like, well, I, I feel like sexual repression leads to like disease and oh. mental illness and oh. you know a whole bunch of stuff like think about mm. like if, we, if so, so for me um mm. sex sexuality this very it's like you could probably power a house with all that energy mm. right Too oh, yeah. i feel like it is Too. It's like it's it's exactly. it's a life force energy, right? Yeah, if you want to move from exactly. religion, but I should talk about spirituality. 100%. And I think yeah. that religion mm -hmm. looks at sex as being sacred because it is such a powerful energy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, why I say that is because I think we've talked a lot about maybe the negative effects of religion, right. and it's so right. easy. it's easy target. Right. It really is. Right. But but. There, I think there was at one point a good intention. For sure, for sure, it's it's powerful. Yeah, powerful it's like fire. Sexuality, yes, sex, it's an energy. It is like it is, fire. In my opinion, it is the most powerful, one of the most powerful energies that human beings can emit. Yeah, absolutely. And so I understand why religions have said, you know, this is sacred. You know. Mm. Uh, reserve this for special interactions and so on and so forth so yeah. the idea of repressing that can you imagine sitting on a nuclear bomb mm. and what that would look like what that would be like mm. you know what i mean so i feel like that repression leads to a lot of disease mm. of the mind mm. of the spirit and of the body okay. and if we don't have a healthy way to you know allow that energy to move through us Mm -hmm. uh, of course, because it is supposed to move through us. It's creative energy, yes, right? Yes. So if we're, not, if we're there's no way for, I mean, we literally create life <laughs> through it, which is, you know, in, incredible when you start to think about it like that. But if we don't allow that energy to move through us, mm -hmm. that stagnant energy can poison us and kill us. And then that's the end of that. So that's my thoughts. In no, terms I of love it. I love it because <clears throat> religion has missed... Uh, a piece has been missed. Mm -hmm. So we honor, I think religion, humanity was trying to make sense of this beautiful power, right? right? And honor it and, and keep people safe as well. Like there is an essence of like fire. It yeah. is life-giving, like insanely life-giving, insanely mm -hmm. wonderful. And it can actually destroy you. For sure. It really can. There, sure. The abuse piece is when you are abused sexually, it can destroy you. And when you repress it, it can destroy you. So there's a destructive and a life-giving aspect yeah. of sex. And <clears throat> what I think has not been done for us and that we get to do now, right? Mm -hmm. As parents, as just ourselves kind of exploring and, and becoming our own version of ourselves as adults, um, is how do we live... Um, letting it flow through mm -hmm. how do we teach our kids to let it flow through mm -hmm. but also honor how they want to engage with their bodies mm -hmm. themselves with themselves and with other people right so if you take the extreme we're talking about abstinence right yeah. like one of the things that just made no sense is you t you you tell children or teenagers when they get there don't have sex done that's all you tell them yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't have sex and then yet they're physically capable, their hormones are going crazy, mm -hmm. and then at some point along the line, uh, marriage happens, a lot of early marriages happen, a lot of unwed pregnancies happen, a lot of this happens, 
because there's a missing piece. Yeah. So how do you actually enjoy your sexual energy until you're ready to use it? And then us as adults, okay, so some of us may enjoy um, outside of a committed relationship having sex. There's all kinds of versions of your sex life that work and align with your values. Some of us that don't want to, how do you actually allow that energy to flow and be your creativity mm -hmm. when you're not actually having sex with another person? And I think oftentimes we forget that our sexual experience is with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Intimacy is with ourselves. It's so interesting that you talk about that because immediately I think of alchemy. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I love that word. You know, in yeah. terms of like how do you use that energy yeah. in a different way? I know like, for example, like sometimes I'll say like athletes aren't supposed to copulate before mm -hmm. a big game or, mm -hmm. you know, some creative people yeah. will choose to abstain for a while while they're yeah. working on a project yeah. or, or whatever it might be. I think like that using that energy, mm -hmm. that life force energy, that yeah. creative energy and transforming it mm -hmm. into different ways. I think that would be a beautiful conversation to have with young people. Oh, like you feel this, yeah. this is a desire you have, it's beautiful, it's yeah. real, it's okay, yes. everyone feels it. Yes. Now let's talk about what you this power can do. Yeah, what can this do? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Talks about totally. what, do you, what do you mean of uh, intimacy with yourself? Well, okay, so I actually capture sex life as if it's your relatedness to your body and it's how you express your body in the world. Yeah. Which is from birth. So intimacy with yourself is essential. So you are intimate in your mind, body, soul. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we aren't intimate with our body because of... Now again, like the youth now, I think there is a different perception around it. Uh, my daughters are having a different experience around it because I think we've all, a lot of my generation has done some work on this. Mm -hmm. But there's still people in religion that, no, I would say that's still very shut down. But <clears throat> what is intimacy with self? I mean, you think of it outside of sex. It is sitting silent with yourself. How many people actually sit silent with themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That can be disturbing. Mm -hmm. It can be upsetting. You, you have emotions. I mean, I love that there's a rise of awareness around that we are emotional beings and there is a health in our mental capacity and our emotional capacity and there's a lot more awareness around that that's an intimacy with self mm -hmm. that you can actually relate and feel your feelings right not just think your thoughts because mm -hmm. thinking your thoughts feeling your feelings but then what about engaging with your body these are all forms of intimacy with yourself mm -hmm. so it, it is masturbation but it's not so one of the practices that i love is that what if you just actually relate to your body and discover its beauty like just literally like slow it down for a moment. Maybe we just stop everything and we touch our legs for a mm -hmm. moment. But you're like, it's just, that's intimate. That's intimate because you're pausing and giving presence to yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and the conversation is simple, but it's not had. So it becomes big. So we talk about sexual energy transmutation, right? Napoleon mm -hmm. Hill, mm -hmm. love and sex ah, together. Yeah, right sexual transmutation. Yeah, you transmute this energy to yeah. something else. I was actually thinking that. I, I didn't know you guys were going there, but yeah. <laughs> That, that was all my mind. Like, I don't want to go into all that. Oh, cool. But it's brilliant and it's actually yeah. simple. It's not complex. It's just we yeah. don't. It's like, okay, great. You're having a great. It's like you look at artwork mm -hmm. and you can actually take that emotiveness and you can think about something else. What if you think of artwork and it reminds you of a parent and there's a beauty connected? So, what if you actually have sexual pleasure and then you think of your project at work? You're actually transmuting that energy yeah. into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's hard. It's not. It's, yeah. Wait, it's, 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 right. it's just practice. It takes it's practice. Just, yeah. Honestly, it's just yeah. practice. It, really it takes does. practice it and does. it probably takes willingness because when you have willingness is probably fair. I, I think in That's the most. Fair, yeah. I think in the most organic sense, if I think of Napoleon Hill, he also mentioned something, and I, I think it's another chapter. Maybe it's the same one. He says, uh, "There is no greater influence on a man than being with the right woman." Mm -hmm. and, I, and I relate that to the energy of the sexual mm -hmm. energy you can get with being with the right mate or the right mm -hmm. person. So I think without even you saying it takes practice, I feel like if it happens on the, more, on the most organic level, you having this intimate connection with this person mm -hmm. gives you like this new pep in your step, this new walk. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you're not even trying to do that. It just happens because you just... Your mind stimulated. Your yeah. your body's feeling all these different things. So yeah, I don't think it necessarily has to be so deliberate. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, he's saying it could just it could just happen. Yeah, that's weird. When, right. when you just said that, I thought about the Will Smith interview. Yeah, when he said that he he can't even do anything unless it's for a woman. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is like to me, I, at first I was off put by that. To be honest, I was like, 
<laughs> you're only like you can only do things that is for a woman but then I like I understood because I make jokes with people about that I'm like you go through history every terrible thing that's happened is because it's a, because of a woman like in I'm just talking shit but like in all seriousness like people do so many crazy things just for the love of, of another person mm -hmm. or the lust of another person mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but he's he flipped that and that's when I like respected it differently because he flipped it and he's like mm -hmm. I want to do great for this woman mm -hmm. you know what I mean which is another powerful kind of energy it, it really is. I, I really think, I was just writing some little ad like, hey, you want to up level your sex life, blah, blah. I hate the marketing side of my work, but, um, oh, marketer. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what it came down to it, I'm like, if we actually do this, mm -hmm. it is so beyond us enjoying our own sex life. Mm -hmm. Like that is a critical and many of us are not like, <laughs> seriously, how many of us or someone we know is not happy with their sex life, right? Mm -hmm. But if you actually are, it does actually make your day better. For mm -hmm. sure. It makes you feeling like really owning who you are, you walk into life differently. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be with another person. No. Yeah. It, really, it really does. In fact, I would say, if this is, this is the thing, many of us are coming into relationships starving. Yeah. And we are putting a demand right. on someone else, yeah. and then we have this expectation sexually, yeah. Yeah. and that right off the top throws things. And yeah. you know what? This is kind of like a, 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 a loop. It's kind of I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of go really left with this, but it made me think about <laughs> he it. Does now. This all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And we had this conversation about like pornography, and that like for me, I feel like there there are places for it, but I feel like it's like anything where too much of it can be very detrimental to, some, to somebody. Like mm -hmm. if someone who's not in a relationship and they're relying on it, I feel like it can also create this false sense of expectation. Mm -hmm. So when they finally get into an intimate relationship, they have these high expectations because they've been watching a movie. Okay. And love it. Love it. Love it. And, yeah. and, and we were talking about erotic blueprints. Yeah. The if you're looking so there's some porn that is based on actual human experience right. and they're it's telling a story porn, about it. Call. Yeah, no one like, watches that shit. It is good. No one oh my god. That shit. Okay, whatever. Then. All right. So anyways, we'll, so let's say that no one's watching. So it. no, no sorry, watching. sorry. Talk about. Ah! No, so you're saying no one, no one. Let's keep the conversation real. No, no, no one watches porn with a storyline. No, 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 like soft porn, like the Fifty Shades, like Fifty Shades of Grey would be like that's I love box office. No, but that's like let's like you know. I mean, it's not my, it's not my stuff. I'm not really into that. I don't understand what he's saying. So soft porn would probably be like ten percent of what people are actually watching, not the stuff that's like. Okay, let's go right to the like the browsers or whatever. Yeah. Let's go to the mass. You're right. Let's go to the. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Back on track. <laughs> I think what happens is that the perception is. I agree. It's like you too much of anything. You get you get to think that that's it, and you get hungry for it. People can get off on that. This is the only access yeah. to my pleasure. So there's that. Yeah. Mm. The other thing that can happen is you have an idea. You talked about assumptions, mm -hmm. right? So we talked about oh, you come in and you make assumptions about your partner's pleasure or your mm -hmm. own pleasure. Once you actually understand that there are different types of pleasure, mm. you can then categorize porn. Ah, oh, that's sexual porn. Oh, that's kinky porn. Oh, that's energetic porn, which may mm. be a soft porn that nobody's watching. Yeah. Right? Or like, uh, there's different like, erotic blueprints. Like, if, yeah. you, if you actually can understand this, my desire is that kids actually, part yeah. of the, oh, this is disturbing even to me as a parent, that part of sex ed is actually pleasure education. Mm. Because what happens is if you're all, if you're not if you're only taught like the the safety and the danger, somewhere you're going to discover the pleasure. And where are you discovering it? Especially in a virtual world, you're finding it in porn. And it's it's just uh, either it's unrealistic, mm -hmm. uh, where you're going to extremes and you'll never get that satisfied, or it's just one sided and it's not talking about the real human in front of you. Yeah. And they may actually have a very different desire. Right. And some people will have a desire exactly like that porn. It's not right. like that. I'm big on nothing is bad and wrong. It either works or it doesn't work. Right. So porn actually can totally be amazing Absolutely. for some people. people. Right. Yeah. Right. In, the right, in the right sense. And I just also, you know, I'll end on this, like being a man in this social climate right now, like I find it very necessary for, for men like myself to, to, if we're going to do that in moderation, because one thing you don't want to do around is go around is you've already been um you know uh associated with 
looking at women as objects mm -hmm. and porn is like infamous for mm -hmm. treating women a certain way and having them in certain positions and mm -hmm. so so on and so forth so that imagery is what i'm saying uh -huh. you know okay. through the repetition if you're you know five days a week doing that i think five five days a week. i'm just i'm yeah. using that as a seven. example seven over here <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, as a man, like, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be very careful with that, and that's just, you know, kind of my stance on it. But you know, very as, careful. No, I love that. No, very careful with how you use pornography in oh. your life is what I'm trying to gotcha, say. Gotcha, gotcha. So, Again, like fire. Like fire. It is like fire. Like Absolutely. align it with your vows, and maybe pornography gets to change. Mm. Like porn has a bad name too. Mm. What if we actually do variations of porn? Because there is ethical ethical porn. Not, I don't know what you mean by soft porn, but I was referring to ethical porn, yeah. where it's actually people having great sex right. in camera, in right. front of like they're. There's so a, it's a, a different porn experience. awards actually. In yes, is, is to talk about like women, like portraying sexual acts that are consensual, that are ple pleasing to both parties. Okay, well, can I can I just just jump yeah. in and yeah. say this though? No, I just want to make a point. Okay. Like we consume the porn, they make things that people want yeah. to consume. Yeah. Where they're not putting stuff out there that people are like, oh, that's disgusting. I don't want to watch that. They make crazy that's porn so where people do things that are that I wouldn't even. Go, no, no. Let's hold on a second. I love this. They're taking it all the way to where things that I would never do. Where like yeah. all the way. I don't want to say it on camera. All the way to where things with people I would never do to like soft porn where it's like more like the what you guys are talking about. We choose. Well, I'm not talking about soft porn. No, they're, 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 hear what I'm saying. Yeah. We choose what we want to watch. So if, like, the reason what I'm saying that is because you guys, you got no. Right. No. I'm all of that. My point is, all yeah. of it's available. That's my point. Now. We can, it was always available. Soft porn was always available. It's not, not referring TMN to TMN was always not available. Referring, referring the the yeah. hardcore porn was always available. We we're consuming it. So if there, I watch I watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that. Here's the thing. The people who produce porn, they'll get upset and say like, "Oh, I wanted to make more creative porn where where they're telling storylines, but no one is watching it. Mm -hmm. So I can't make money. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can sit here and have this conversation, mm -hmm. but the reality is, okay. in our own minds, we're watching the roughest but, shit, the craziest shit, the cr the kinkiest shit, because that's what we want to watch. To, to me, honestly, that's that's like, real. Uh, so like, uh, if the, if if it was an op, don't you think they want to make money? These poor people want to make money. Do. So if the, if people are watching soft porn or the other porn, they would make only soft porn. But what you see what I'm saying? So that that sounds like to me. I'm I'm gonna use a very far fetched analogy, but bear with me. That sounds like to me a rapper that says, "Oh, I want to do conscious rap, but you know what? You know, talking about selling drugs and thing makes me money, so I'm gonna keep doing it." So the my same point thing. is, so my point, yeah, it's the same thing. So my point is. It's just a matter that people in that industry right now lack true ultimate creativity because there is a way to make that more. No. More that. But that's a that's a topic no. for that's, that's, that's a discussion a, for a different for time. a different time. Yes, but, I'm just you know, saying. I still buy two cents. Uh, okay, I think it's both. Yeah. I always want to come in and say it's both. You know this, but and I know we're out of time. Yeah. Well, thank you for ah. next time. Well, thank you guys for watching the different <laughs> worlds. <laughs> Make sure you know, if you're on YouTube to hit the subscribe button because we we need the subscribers, we need the followers. If you love yeah. what you heard today, and you want some like, more of it, you want to see more of the beautiful Angelina. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. And uh, hold on, Beth. Oh yes. What is going on? Where are you from? Uh, yes. What is, where can they where find can they you? Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Beth, where can they reach you? Them. Where? Where? Wow. Okay. It's changing. This is annoying, isn't it, everyone? Okay, go to Facebook and find me Beth Ostrander. There My you go. everything is on Beth Ostrander. And the script there, the link will be in the description. Yeah, as well. let's do that. So we'll make sure we'll we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll we'll link you uh -huh. and people can find Shame Beth. Coach. There. Yeah, no, Shame, Shame coach. Shame coach. We are out. Done. Benito.